So, your display reads 1,000 gallons per minute. How do you know it is right? It's because you calibrated the meter correctly, and that's why we're going back to basics on calibration of field instruments. Hi, I'm Jim Montague of Control and ControlGlobal.com with another edition of Back to Basics for the Process Automation Media Network. Calibration is often misunderstood, sometimes misused, and can even lead to lawsuits. We're going to get a look at what field instrument calibration is and what the pitfalls are. Calibration is the process of either verifying or adjusting the reading of a field instrument to agree with the reading of another instrument, a secondary standard, or a primary calibration standard. Easy, right? In a word, no. First of all, the instrument you're calibrating is usually in service in the field, not on the bench or at the factory. Unless you can remove the instrument from the application it's installed in and take it to the bench, or send it to the factory or a calibration lab, you are going to have trouble calibrating it. Most field instruments are made up of two parts, a primary element and a transmitter. Primary elements include flow tubes, orifice plates, pressure sensors, wet chemistry sensors like pH or ORP or conductivity, level gauges of all types, temperature probes, and the like. They generate some sort of signal, usually a voltage, current, or resistance that is proportional to the measured variable they're designed to see, level, flow, temperature, pressure, or chemistry. These primary elements connect to field transmitters, which take the signal generated by the primary element and characterize it so that it is linear, apply engineering unit coefficients to it, and display and retransmit the characterized signal in either an analog, usually 4 to 20 MADC, or digital format, which means some kind of field bus. When a field instrument is new, both the primary element and the transmitter have been calibrated at the factory and the calibration information has been supplied with the unit. Often this data is lost. ISO 9000 and other quality standards often require that the calibration of the field instrument be checked at regular intervals, either annually or several times a year, which is usual. Sometimes this is pretty simple. Calibrating a pH sensor, for example, is usually straightforward. Most industrial pH sensors are inserted through a ball valve into the process or they are suspended in a vessel. These installations are designed to remove the sensor for maintenance or replacement or calibration. Because you can remove the sensor, you can take it to the bench or send it to the vendor for calibration checking. Most temperature sensors, either thermistors or RTDs, are likewise installed in thermal wells and can be removed easily to calibrate and check performance. Many pressure sensors can also be removed from the process for calibration, and field calibrators have been developed to permit checking the calibration of a pressure sensor right in the field, which is both easy and reliable. Ultrasonic and level radar sensors can be removed easily and calibrated using known distance targets. Now, tell me how to remove a magnetic flow meter or flow tube or orifice plate or other primary element for calibration. You can't, unless you've installed a bypass, which is almost never done, or are willing to shut down the process for the length of time you need to have the primary element out of the line. The fact is you can't do it. So what you have to do is decide how you're going to perform a calibration. One of the things we must remember is that there is a difference between accuracy and repeatability. Accuracy, which is calibratable for in the lab or at the factory, is defined as how well the measured reading compares to either a primary standard or a secondary standard. A primary standard is a weigh tank or a standardized solution or some other physical representation of an absolute value. A secondary standard is a device that has been closely calibrated to a primary standard and is used for checking the accuracy of the field device. That is, if you can do that. Repeatability, however, is different and more important for field instrumentation calibration. Repeatability is statistical precision of measurement. That is, how often the measured value repeats itself under the same process conditions. In the process industries, it is more important to have a repeatable device than an accurate device. So, how do you calibrate a field instrument that you can't take out of the line? What most people do is to assume the repeatability of the primary element and check the calibration of the transmitter. There are many primary simulation devices for various kinds of primary elements, which mimic a known value signal from a primary element. 
This permits us to determine and adjust out the errors of the transmitter. Recent developments in some types of field instruments include methods to test the performance of the primary element without taking it out of the line. Magnetic flow meters and other electronic devices can now be tested this way. Venturi's and other differential pressure devices, though, still must be removed periodically and either recalibrated to eliminate the error from wear or discarded and replaced. Finally, how do you figure out how accurate your field device is? The idea is to add up the sum of the squares of all the errors of the device and take the square root of them. But there are generally too many potential errors to be able to get an accurate value. Piping errors, placement errors, design errors, and so forth all contribute. Transmitter error in modern instruments is nearly discardable because it is so small. You can safely assume that the real accuracy of your field instrument in its installation is probably plus or minus 10% of its real value, assuming you haven't done anything wrong, and it gets worse from there. If you're performing the same operation you've done many times before, and the measured values don't repeat, you have a problem. Otherwise, you can believe your field instrument. The problem comes when you have two instruments in parallel, say two flow meters on outlet lines, and both should read about the same, and they don't. Then you run into the what time is it on your watch problem. No two field instruments are going to read identically, and one should not be used to calibrate another. You need a device that is an order of magnitude more accurate than the one you want to calibrate, or you can't tell which one is right. Often you just can't do that in the field. And that's the basics of calibration for field instruments. I'm Jim Montague for the Process Automation Media Network. Thanks for watching.